Happy to be in God's presence this morning. Come on, let's lift up our hands and begin to return and pray to the name of the Lord. Come on, let's give him thanks. Let's thank him for the blessings he has given to us. For the fact that you and I are alive, come on, let's open our hands and say thank you. As the only thing we owe him, we owe him thanksgiving, we owe him praises. Come on, let's lift up our hands and our voice this morning. Let's say thank you to the creator of heaven and earth, the one who has made it possible for you and I to be here this morning to partake of this service this morning. Come on, lift up your hands, lift up your voice. Say thank you. Call him sweet names. Lord, we bless your holy name. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we give you all the praises. Blessed be your holy name, O Jesus. For last week, Lord, we come to say thank you. For this Sunday, Lord, we are saying thank you. For the preservation of our lives and that of our families, Lord, we are saying thank you. For those of us that are present here, Lord, we are also saying thank you. Blessed be your holy name, O Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O God. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy to be praised. Blessed be your holy name, O God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Thanksgiving is one thing we only owe God. Hallelujah. If any man does anything for you and I, we should learn to return thanksgiving at all times. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, before I go further, um, let's bow down our heads and pray this morning, to pray this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the grace to appear before you this morning to hear from you once again. Holy Spirit, we ask that this was that we are about to hear, O God, that you open our understanding to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Open our hearts to also hear from you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Let each and every one of us have an encounter with this world this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not go back home the same after this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, you are the great teacher, you are our comforter. We invite you into this place this morning. Have your way in the service. Have your way in this ministration this morning. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Um, so we are gradually getting to the end of the year. With, um, so we started this year with some promises uh, which uh, the prosperity for the next level as given by Pastor Charles himself through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That was how we started this year. And we are gradually getting to the end of the year with those promises of God in our own hearts. Prosperity for health, prosperity for wealth, prosperity for help, prosperity for what again? Direction. So all these are actually prosperity for the next level. But the truth, the truth is that not all of us has gotten to that point yet. For some of us, it is still a work in progress. And for some of us, some of us have partook, uh, have partook of some of those prosperities for the next level, and some are still partaking. And some of us are still yet to get there. Praise the Lord. And one of the reasons could be that, um, you see, when God wants to lift us from one point to another, from point A to point B, He needs to make sure you're qualified for that next position. Hallelujah. He prepares you. And um, one of those ways He prepares us is through the messages we have heard so far. So God cannot just give us prosperity for the next level and not give us ways to actually achieve them. Praise the Lord. We've heard this series on faith, and for me, I've had my own encounter with that particular um, teaching. We also had a series on um, overcoming the giants. The one that stands out for me mostly is overcoming the uh, giants of fear. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't know which one will be any, uh, the one for uh, some of us, but that one stood out for me. And also last week we looked at praise, how it can actually help us get to the next level. So what I'm trying to say is that when God wants to build us up, He equips us with the necessary tools. So that when you get to that level, you will have the necessary tools to maintain that position. Praise the Lord. You will find out that so many people are rich today. Some of them just stumbled on it. Boom. They were not equipped for that 
position. I was watching the video this morning, Fenya Badum. Fenya Badum used to be a player, a football um, player in Nigeria. And, um, and you know, footballers, they were definitely coming to world. He was sick. He had a high problem. He had to stop playing soccer. And um, the hard thing, what is the advice you have for the young ones today? He said, when you have your money, invest it. He didn't do that. So it's um, advising the young ones to do that. So what I'm trying to say is that he got to that point of riches and he didn't know exactly what to do with it. Hallelujah. Amen. And everything just went like a wind. So God will not put us in a position where he knows that you are not equipped enough to get the, you know, you don't have the necessary equipment to manage what is going to bless you with. Hallelujah. And that is why he has given us instructions, the faith instructions, the fear or a giant, the giant series we had, all those are instructions. And you would add that you would also believe that and you would want to agree with me that every of those instructions are actually scriptural based and are supposed to cut us into shape. They are supposed to shape in us. When someone is fat, when you are too fat and you want to go through a door, and that door is the only door you can go through, what do you do? And you cannot pass through that door, what do you do? have to be cut into size. Hallelujah. You would lose weight. Oh yes, cut into size is not necessarily physical cutting, but you have to undergo exercises. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God is going to take us through those exercises throughout the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so today we shall be looking at understanding the power of discipline. Understanding the power of discipline for our next level. Hallelujah. Amen. Last week we looked at some of the things that understanding means Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4 and by 7 it said, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. You, will, you can never underestimate the place of understanding in everything. And also last week we also mentioned that what makes an outstanding student is understanding. What makes um, the guy who tops the class from the guy who was at the bottom is understanding. Praise the Lord. And we also looked at Proverbs 21 verse 16 which told us that we should not wander out of understanding. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding shall do what shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Praise the Lord. So in moving from point A to B in the search for the next level, we need understanding of the area where we currently are. If you're a student or if you're a lecturer, you're working as a lecturer, for you to be promoted for, to the next level, you need to understand what makes that area work. Praise the Lord. And one thing we actually need is actually discipline. Discipline. I know we might confuse me. So the discipline we are looking at today is not the discipline of punishment. It's the di discipline of your own self. Training your own self. So um, what we're looking at today is just about working on our minds. Praise the Lord. Working on our mind. The commission where we come from as the winner's chapter. Um, one thing they actually do is to work on the minds. Because that is where everything happens before it happens in the physical. If you want to kill someone now, if you want to just tell him a very bad word, the person cannot take it. The person will begin to feel depressed. Praise the Lord. And I was telling my wife yesterday, I said, people are telling the way they talk to people nowadays because they don't know how it's going to affect them. You tell someone a negative word, the person can go and commit suicide. So they work on your mind because they know that there is power in your mind. So when someone tells you something, when someone tells you you are done, you can either accept it or reject it. So when you reject it, it's because you know who you are in Christ. But once you accept it, it begins to take form, it begins to take shape, you know, and can actually, you know, determine how we move in life. Praise the Lord. And so that is what we shall be looking at today. How we can discipline some of the things that happen in our minds. Praise the Lord. So quickly, what is discipline? What is discipline? The dictionary meaning of discipline means to train oneself to do something in a controlled and habitual 
way. Hallelujah. Train yourself to do something in a controlled way, in a habit, with the habit, in, in an arbitrary way. Praise the Lord. It can also be connoted to mean living a well-guided life or living a covenant-guided life or setting one's life in order. Praise the Lord. So that each and every one of us requires discipline in every way. Praise the Lord. I was talking to the choristers about three weeks ago and I said, God has given us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. He did not call it gifts. They are called fruits. And it's fruits, before it grows and becomes big something, it needs to be cultivated over time. Praise the Lord. And that is how discipline is. Hallelujah. So we have three keys in the school of discipline. And number one is thoughts. Praise the Lord. Thoughts. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. He said, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Hallelujah. The way you think in your heart, that is how you are. Whatever your mind can conceive, that is how it is. So in every endeavor, our minds cannot, you cannot expect to dwell on thoughts of failure and get success. Praise the Lord. You can't expect to be thinking thoughts of, um, um, of, uh, of defeat and you expect to be victorious. You cannot expect to be thinking thoughts of failure and you expect to arrive at success. Praise the Lord. Our thoughts can prevent us from getting to the place we are destined. Praise the Lord. So in the Bible passage we read this morning, Numbers chapter 13, from verse 1 to 3, I will take that first. And he said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 2, Send down men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And in verse 3, and Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men, they are heads of the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. So we move to verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain. Verse 18. And see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell in the area. Whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And verse 20. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring up the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. And in verse 21, so they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob as men come to Hamath. So they went forth and they searched the land. So I'll jump to verse 10. Before I go further, I want us to realize that this was a point where they actually searched the promised land, but they did not enter the promised land at that point in time. They actually had to spend years before they go to the promised land. And one of the reasons we'll be saying in verse 13. In verse 13, praise the Lord. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. And in verse 31, but the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we hold it there. Praise the Lord. So these men were actually sent to actually go and survey the land. They saw the land. They surveyed the land. It was a perfect land. It was a good land. Everything was good. But one thing kept them from going. In verse 31, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are what they are stronger than we. And in verse 32, And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitant thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And finally, in verse 33, and there we saw the giant, the son of Anak, which come of the giant, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. 
and so we bear in their sight. Praise the Lord. This is where I'm going to. Let's look at that particular verse very well. And there we saw the giant, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we bear in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we bear in their sight. Praise the Lord. Nobody can give you a name that you are not. Nobody can call you a name that you do not call yourself. This is the reason why they could not go. So when they got there, they saw giants. They came back, they came to report. The giant did not call them grasshoppers. The giant did not call them small men. So they went and came back and came back with this evil report that they were like small men. They were like grasshoppers. Their mindset was already caged that they cannot, you know, they already had the defeated mentality. So even if they were supposed to go to war, I think it was Caleb in the preceding verse that said they can take these people. Someone shut him up and said, no, we cannot. And this is the reason. The giants have not called them, you are small. They call themselves small. And we were in our own sight first, in our sight, we seen ourselves as small. The world has not called us small in most things. The world has not set up policies to begin to look at us small. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We already, some of us already have a kind of mentality, a limited mentality because of the situation around us. The situation has not called us small. The situations have not called us um, grasshoppers. But we already have a grasshopper mentality to most of the situations around us. And that is why we... Do you know how a grasshopper is? How can a grasshopper stand against uh, a dog? Let's start with it. So if you already have a grasshopper mentality and you're going forward for the next level, how would you achieve that? Praise the Lord. And some of us are like this, man. Praise the Lord. Do you know, so many times in my lunch, I have had people ask me one very funny question. Do you know what that question is? They asked me, what is your son's name? Before my son arrived, they said, what will you give your, what name would you give your son? And I said, I'll give my son a Nigerian name. And they were like, why would you give him a Nigerian name? And I said, no, oh, that's what I feel like giving him. They said, oh, you don't want to limit him by his name. I had scattered. I said, what does the name have to do with? They say that people, when they want to get a job in this land, they look at names first. Before, when you submit your CV, they look at your name. Praise the Lord. And people are currently changing their names because of that mentality. Praise the Lord. If you have an excellent spirit, if you have an excellent mentality, if you have a mentality to be, you know, to excel in your field, your gift will make way for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't want us to have that same mentality. Most of us are currently doing that. We change our name just because we feel the policies will not. When did, you, when did your name replace the name of Jesus? When did our name replace the power in the name Jesus? Praise the Lord. We should never allow our thought to hinder us. Praise the Lord. So, we should note some of these points. It is our thoughts that needs working, not our names. Praise the Lord. People have got in our interesting people. Is Israel like this one here? Is it not a local name? Israel look is an Hebrew name. It's an Hebrew name, but it's not an English name. But his name, but his, but his son name is a is a, is a Nigerian name. Praise the Lord. There are people here. There is a Ghanaian lecturer in my school. He's a senior lecturer. I know his name started with Ado. He's not English. But he's positioned rightly. All the uh, mid, middle, uh, mid East, uh, Southeast Asian that are positioned in places in this country, most of them didn't have to change, especially the Muslims. They don't change their name. So let that mentality not stick with us. Praise the Lord. I know it is growing slowly. It's growing slowly. It's growing slowly in our minds. And some of us don't even know it. Praise the Lord. Our names have not replaced the name of Jesus. And what the name of Jesus can do for us, He will continue to do. Praise the Lord. May the Lord give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. 
So our next level is rooted in the power of our thoughts. Praise the Lord. The book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Praise the Lord. Until our mind is renewed, our life cannot be totally transformed. It's simple. You cannot be moving around with um, a negative mind and expect to get positive results. Until our mind is totally renewed, our life can never be truly transformed. I was facing a kind of fear until I heard that message on defeating your fear, giant series, that period. Hallelujah. So yeah, it is not about what happened without us. It is not about what happened outside. It's about what happens in our mind. And the fact that you and I are black, you see, black does not connote lack. Amen. Black does not connote limitation. Amen. One thing is constant. The universal gospel. The same gospel people here in New Zealand, they hear it in Nigeria, they are transformed. Same gospel people here, here, they hear in the US and they are transformed. The fact that you and I are black does not connote lack. It has never connoted lack and it will not connote lack. The book of Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. It says, For ye are the salt of the earth. In verse 14 it says, Ye are the light of the world. Praise the Lord. So yes, the gospel is constant. The gospel should speak for us. Praise the Lord. And when we also talk about a mentality, I was listening to um, Israel at this time. Sometimes people say things um, that probably affect our mentality and it begins to affect our thoughts. It just won a, um, well, the UFC 243. And one of the people that asked him a very funny question. The report has asked him a very, very funny question. He said, How much of the good stuff do you hear about yourself? How much of the good things do you hear about yourself? Do you know what he said after he said so many things? I picked a particular one. He said, You are never as good as they say you are, and you are never as bad as they say you are. All that matters is how you see yourself. Praise the Lord. People will tell you things to change your mind. People will tell us things to change your mind. I have heard things. Hmm? But it does, all those does not matter. What matters is how do you see yourself. So what we have in our minds to a large extent determines the way we say things. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. From the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. From the abundance of the things we have in our heart, the kind of thoughts we have in our heart, the mouth speaks. Hallelujah. From the abundance of the things we have in our heart, the kind of thoughts we've been able to keep in our heart, the mouth speaks. And that leads us to the second um, key in the school of discipline, which is words. Words are very, very, very powerful. Words are very, very, very powerful. Proverbs 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Words, when said and articulated in the right way, can change someone's mind. It can alter people's belief. It can build someone up and it can also destroy. James chapter 3 from verse 1 to 12. A very long scripture about words and how we should articulate our words and, and we should be careful about it. And I read verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the great condemnation. And in verse 2. 
For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bring you the whole body. In verse 3. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. In verse 4. Behold also the ships, which though be so great, and are driven of a fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a very small hem, whithersoever the governor listed. And in verse 5. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire it can kindle. In verse 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, and it defileth the whole body, and set it on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast and of, and of bed and of serpent and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same man proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Praise the Lord. Doth the fountain set forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Verse 12. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either in vine figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Praise the Lord. What we are talking about in this particular verse, especially, is. You cannot continue to confess negative things and expect to see positive results. A fig tree cannot give olive berries. Either they buy and give fig. Praise the Lord. We have to watch what we say. Some of us are going to use words, especially when it is funky, when it is in current usage. Especially this word depression. I have a guy in my lab. And we're talking on Friday. This guy told me how he has battled depression. He's from the US. He has battled depression from um, secondary school up until now. He's still battling it once in a while. He said it comes and goes. And when the guy finished telling me his stories, I realized most of the things this guy has gone to, I have gone through them. <laughs> but I have never considered them depression. So do you see? Immediately he said it was depression. My mind sat and I was like, oh, you mean this is depression? <laughs> but I never saw it like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it, you see, this little, little thing people say, they give him this, what did he go through? It took him time to get admission. Do you know how long it took him to get admission to the university? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds funny, but these are the things that happen around us. You know, before you know what, people are beginning to confess any small thing, oh, I'm depressed, oh, I'm depressed. But this actually are not depression. They are not things we should confess with our own mouths. Praise the Lord. And we should be able to shape our own future with the words we say. I have a friend also. He has confessed that he's going to stay five years in university for his PhD. He said that thing in his first year. Like play, like play. He has, he is going to conclude his fourth year by November. And by November, he is not still sure of going. He is thinking of registering for an extra three months that will take him into his fifth year. Has it not come to pass? I called him on Friday. He dropped me in where I packed. And we are, me and the other guy already discussed him. So when I called him on Friday, I didn't feel peace. I felt that, oh, probably if I don't talk with this guy, it's going to feel like I gossiped about him. So I told him exactly what I felt. And I told him, do you know the reason you're your state to know is because of the things you said? Yeah, he was joking. He said, no, no, he doesn't think that way. I said, well, me, I'm just telling you. From my first year, when I got in here, you were always telling me, oh, well, you would tell me you will stay here four years. I said, no, I'm not staying here four years. I was always giving it back to him. I'm not staying here four years, but it's time for me to leave, I will leave. You said you will stay, I said, no, you, you will stay here five years. And he said, yes, you will stay here five years. 
and now IBS is going to stay in you see, praise the Lord. So we should watch what we say. Let's be disciplined in the kind of words that come out from this amount. Praise the Lord. Our words have a way of shaping the future, especially for parents also. Back home, I think Pastor Mrs. also gave something like this, a message like this a few times ago. Most parents have been able to shape the future of their children with the words they say. You are living in the basement and slap your house. And you will see people, the child does something, and the woman will say, Koli my she will use cause. And these children will grow up becoming users in the society. Why? No matter how angry my mom was, hmm, if she wants to get angry and she wants to do something, instead of saying Koli she will tell you it will be well for you. It will be well. Uh, I don't know how she normally says it in her language, but it connotes it will be well with you. You know. It has never got to that because what we say shapes us. Whether you like it or not. Somebody was telling me around at the university of what they are just for us, they don't mean anything. No, they do. They are very powerful. And that is also another place we have to be careful about. So what you don't say, you will never see. The things you do not say, you will never see. The things you don't confess, you will never see. And even if you confess it positively, See, we cannot live a double standard life. We cannot be having a negative thoughts and be speaking for positive words. It won't work. It's like a chain. You think positive thoughts, you say it, you follow it with words, and thirdly, in the school of thoughts, you act it out. You begin to take steps to act it out. Praise the Lord. So taking steps to show we believe what we are thinking and what we are saying. You've talked about it. You said it. Now, begin to act in it. Begin to live in it. A quick example. When I was pursuing a PhD back home, I was trying to get a PhD back home. In my mind, I always told myself, I'm not going to study for my PhD in Nigeria. But each time my friends come to ask, I said, I'm waiting for your PhD. I said, I am waiting for, I'm probably waiting for a form to come out at the University of Portacourt. I was not telling them, not because I was deep believe, because, you know, this, Nigeria, you know the people that are praying for you are people that are against you. <laughs> but I got to a point, I had a message, and I got to a point, and I realized, hmm, I have to say it. So each time they now ask me, I change, I don't know, I don't want to study in Nigeria. And look at it today, praise the Lord. So we must take steps to act it out. Acting, David and Goliath, first Samuel chapter 17 and verse 45. First Samuel, then said David to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And verse 46, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee. And take thy hand from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto thy fowls of the head, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saith, save it, not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you unto our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet him, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistines. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistines in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the end. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Praise the Lord. In the first few verses that we read, David was saying, he was speaking, he was saying, he was saying those things, you know, it's going to happen. But he had to take steps. And what are those steps? He had a sling, he had a stone, and he acted. Praise the Lord. So it is one thing to actually get instructions. It's another thing to actually act it out. Some of us, we are beautiful, we are wonderful, we're taking down notes. We take down notes, we can write it down, we can take down the note, but do we leave out these things? 
do we, do we leave them out? Do we really, you know, leave them out? Praise the Lord. It is one thing for you to hear one thing, to hear something. Another thing is for you to think thing. But the main thing is for you to begin to have that. And seriously, I was listening to Andrew Womack, and Andrew Womack said, there is a limitation to what, can do, what God can do for us. And what he meant by that was that God has given you and I dominion. He also did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of power, love, and of sound mind. That sound mind is supposed to help us think. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sound mind is supposed to help us think and act things out. Praise the Lord. So it is one thing to actually get instructions and that thing to actually put them into practice. And to actually do this, it takes a genuine, conscious, intelligent effort. Praise the Lord. So there are ways to grow in discipline. I'm going to highlight about three ways that can help us grow. But the truth is that, listen, some of us, um, my wife gave me uh, what's called a chat yesterday in the choir about some of us being uh, just like a baby is growing, feeding from milk, then to mash food, then to meat. Some of us are actually still feeding and that baby is pretty good. To actually grow, we need to actually have people we look on to. We need to be able to fashion our lives as those people. So one of the ways to grow in discipline, number one way, is God's word. I don't know how many of us still engage in a personal devotion. Daily personal devotion. Praise the Lord. The book of Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. It said, This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you look at this picture, you look at there are three things that I mentioned there that we've actually mentioned in um, today's teaching. The book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, speaking, but thou shalt meditate, think, daily, night, day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, act it out, according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have thy good success. Praise the Lord. Most of these successes we actually create, some of the things we create are actually embedded in the Bible, and if you do not study, you cannot get it. Praise the Lord. And sometimes it's really good to actually engage ourselves in devotions. You pick some words. Like think for instance, somebody comes and tells you something negative. How would you stop the person? How would you, which word are you going to tell the person? Lamentation 3 and verse 37. I love that scripture. The moment I grabbed that scripture back home, it stopped. It said, who is it that said the thing and it come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? So when people tell you what you are not, is it the Lord's commandment? Is it written in the book? Is it for you? Praise the Lord. But how do we know some of these things if we do not study and know that these words are actually there? And the Lord grant us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Reading number two. Reading anointed books and listening to anointed tips or messages. That is one way we can also get uh, be disciplined in these three lives. You will look at the lives of these people that have lived before us. Those people that are, they are successful. In my second year, I read the book, I can't remember but I only remember the word there. One particular scenario. So what the person does is, he wakes up in the morning, 
And you can also try it. It worked for me and I'm still working because I still do it. He wakes up in the morning, every morning, and he faces, before he leaves on, he faces his mirror. And he speaks to the person in the mirror. And who is the person in the mirror? It is you. He speaks to the person in the mirror and tells the person, this, I did that in my second year. I started doing it for my first, first year, second year. I would tell myself, Manuel, you are the best of the best of the best of the best of the best. Whether it's the best too, whether it's a big fish in a small pond, I don't care. But in my small class, I was stopped. Praise the Lord. So I was telling myself this, and till tomorrow when I stand in my mirror, I still tell myself things. So you can invite that. The truth is that when people tell you things, if you're not careful and you're accepting to begin to leave it out, so it is when you tell yourself something. Look in the mirror. Tell that person something. Tell the person what you want uh, to see in that person's life. And to begin to have doubt itself. Praise the Lord. I've also read another book. It's called Fourth Dimension. I applied whatever it is in, in that book in how I go to New Zealand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor David Yongi Cho, that's his name. He wrote the book Fourth Dimension. How he got some of the things he got was through imaginations and besieging. He needed a bicycle. He already mapped out the shape of the bicycle he needed. He got it. He needed a furniture. He imagined it in his mind and he got it. In coming to New Zealand, do you know what I did after I applied? I picked a particular picture of Universal Canterbury. My laptop, I used that particular uh, screen as my, what do you call that? Not screen saver. Wallpaper, what, what you see every day. As you're typing, you're seeing it every day. And I was imagining myself standing in one of those, you see red and white uh, signboard, and you're still standing there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in that point, when I came, I went to one of those places and I stood there. I did not take a picture, but I went there to see it. Praise the Lord. So when we read and read that books, you will see things that you can practice, and you have to have to have the discipline for you to actually manifest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And finally, prayer and fasting. We cannot underestimate the power of prayers. No matter what we do, you can't underestimate the power of prayer and fasting. The truth is that because of the busy nature of this plant, some of us wake up in the morning, we just um, go and face the day. I don't know what people find it hard to actually fast. Hallelujah. But that is one way we can actually strengthen whatever we hear from the world every day. And just to add to this, I am not really a very good fan of social media. Some of us might I see it out. You know. Um, Instead of reading, spending time reading some of the things you read in social media, you can spend those time reading books. First of all, the books we read sometimes stays. How do I put this down? I belong to a particular um, WhatsApp group where they keep sending books, different, different books. I know I don't have the time to do that now because of the issue, but I try. But do you know what I did? I download those, I created a folder on my one drive. I download those books and I store them in those folders. So I can always have time to look at them once in a while. Praise the Lord. We can also do the same thing. Bishop David Reading Paul says something. He said, Readers are leaders. Most of the leaders you have in the world today, they read so many books. And um, I implore us to also do the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And finally, finally, there's no matter if you like, get to the next level, the next level, the next level, and move to the highest level, highest level, highest level, highest level. If you do not live right, you end up getting the soul world and losing your soul. Praise the Lord.
that is the most important thing. We must live right. We must have a conviction in our heart that we are born again. Sincerely, before I dedicated my life to Christ, November 2nd, 2014. Before then, I was born again. On November, 20, November 2nd, 2014, I dedicated my life because I had to do it because I was no longer sure of my salvation at that time. But I had to do it. Oh, yes, the truth. I had to do it just to be sure I am right with Christ. So no matter how much you know how much riches you get, how much level you climb and get, if you are not right with Christ, it amounts to nothing. Praise the Lord. So in our home, I want us to just bow down our heads. Bow down your heads. In your own way. I want us to at this point begin to um Dedicate. I'm not asking you to raise up your hands. I'm not asking you to uh, lift up your hands. No, it's a relationship between you and God. I want you to begin to, you know, dedicate yourself to Christ this morning. None of us is actually perfect. None of us have attained that state of perfection. So in our own words, in our own ways, in your own way, between you and God, wherever you're seated, why don't begin to dedicate your life to Christ this morning? Begin to ask for fresh grace, fresh anointing to be able to live out that life which he has planned for you and I. And also begin to ask for grace to order your thoughts, to order the kind of words, to order the kinds of things you say, to order the kinds of things that go through your mind. Begin to ask for grace for that uh, for that this morning. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Our God and our God. We thank you, Lord, for today's service. We thank you, Lord, for your words and our comfort. We thank you, Lord, for we know that the thoughts you have for us are of good and not of evil to bring us an unexpected end. And Father, we ask for grace for fresh discipline of our thoughts. We ask for grace for fresh discipline of the words we say. We ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit to come and order our thoughts, order our words, order our acts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In this coming week, O oh Lord, let our thoughts be ordered. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let our acts be ordered in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. None of us shall go astray because of our thoughts. None of us shall go astray because of our thoughts. None of us shall be shaped by the negative words that we confess. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to today's message. We hope you've been blessed. Please don't keep it to yourself. Share it with your contacts. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Stay blessed.